Okay, here we have the Dwarven Forge Master Maze series cavern set. Here I'm only going to show you the pieces from a single box set, even though I've got two box sets over there in the background, which we'll come to later, but I want to just give you some ideas of, and combinations. Now I've not actually used all the uh, sets as I've done this, and I'm, all the pieces in the set, and what I'm going to do is just go through a few options with you, but just to show you that I've built here um, a quite straightforward cavern. Now there's no way in or out, uh, unless you want to use kind of uh, the steps here on the sides here. I'm going to bring this piece to the fore to show you. This is a really fantastic kind of 3D option here, where you've got, if you walk into this seemingly dead end, you've actually got the possibility to hop over and maybe go somewhere else. So this is quite a neat little feature and uh, not the only feature. So there's a Obviously a, ver a variety of options. You get basically a number of uh, tiles. We'll go and break them down into, into pieces in a bit. The bottom of every tile has a brown felt base, which really helps protect your furniture if you are doing it on the table, but I'm always doing it on sort of some baize or cloth of some sort. Now, um, you've got a kind of discrete square system. So although you've got higgledy piggledy kind of crazy paving, you pretty much know where you're going. So when players move around, the, um, these pieces, they pretty much know they've got their movement counts going on here. You can pretty much see what's going on, but they've managed to make it in such a way that it's it, it's subtle and it looks really good and random. This, uh, the cavern sets in general and the cavern passages, etc., have these really nice little slime pits here and there. Not all the pieces have them, but a lot of them do. So this is a kind of liquid, um, a dry liquid. Obviously, it's a it's a, a resin of some sort that's been set that's clear, but they've really well painted it as a really good deep green kind of mossy cavernous feel to that. And again, quite a lot of pieces are 3D. Even this flat piece has got a an inbuilt little red ledge here, so you can always say this is kind of rough terrain. Now, there's actually quite a few identical pieces in this set, um, but with rotation, etc., and a bit of imagination, you really can't tell. So I've got here three completely standard exactly the same size squares and you can't really tell but uh, along with the set you get some additional small pieces to add little flourishes that you can either line up or have across at angles and you can stack and stack so you can make a really tall ro rocky boulder in the middle there you can make a particular area temporarily inaccessible if you say I don't actually want the players to go down there I'll make it really tough you can add a few of these extra spiry kind of mineral growths that, uh, that can occur and you can generally add flourishes now these are all items that come with the set so i'll come to the um adding extras in a bit and i'll actually have some figures running around so you can get an idea of the scale etc with 25 and 28 mil figures this very small piece it's not so easy to make out this is actually what they call a water tub so it's uh, the idea of that is it's a uh, I wouldn't say it's drinkable water, but it's uh, up to you as a DM, etc., game master, whether you want the players to drink from that or not, and uh, whether it's poisonous or otherwise. You can again tuck them all over the place. Okay, so the two pieces that I've got just slightly off camera here, I'm going to just bring in now. So you've got one particular option that brings large, uh, a large full fronted four piece wide down to a two fronted piece wide, and this has hints of. Uh, a more regular stone patterning here and this is hinting that it's going into more of a dungeon so you could use this as a link piece into standard dungeon pieces which you'll see in my other videos uh, that Dwarven Forge Master Maze series have plenty of those or you can use it to go from a, a wide uh, four, four way piece to a, a narrow corridor so I'm going to just quickly um, do a few swaps around here just to just to give you some examples here where you can we can just quickly uh, bring these pieces in let's also bring the other one in to do a very similar thing this is based on a corner junction so you've got a corner where you've got a cave with all kinds of uh, stomach uh, mites and uh, various things growing up on the sides of the wall etc and if I quickly twiddle this around again you've got a much more regular routine kind of dungeon end of passage so if you can imagine walking down this corridor you can see that the regular routine stonework finishes and you've got here a really nice kind of archway and a, a, a literally a hole that you can walk through and put my hand behind that so you can actually see that it's a solid piece there and you can walk through there into a cavern so you just put that in place so you get an idea let me just move a standard corner piece knocking and sliding over a wheel butt as i do and a little fixture so straight away i've just added this in here so you can imagine having a dungeon complex going this way and your players coming in here and uh, wandering into this cavern so you've now got a way in and it's up to you whether you want a way out or not but again you would just pop this in you'd you'd, you'd think about how you'd introduce this piece and uh, you'd obviously slide it on and design it so you could uh, come through here etc or uh, 
however you want to use this etc so um, all the pieces entail uh, quite a, a few complex uh, options as you can see there's quite a few repeating shapes but you really don't get to notice this so I'm going to just lay this out a little bit more simply so you can see what you actually get in the set these little dead ends are fantastic as dead ends or teeny little caverns within caves which is a fantastic place for an ogre etc to hide in in fact I was going to bring some pieces in so let me just quickly do that this is a 28 mil ogre I'm going to bring in some characters now got a rather kingly figure and a 28 mil peasant farmer who's decided to be an adventurer of this scythe etc and he's wandering around the place now of course you can also add uh, other adornments so whether it be some barrels in the corner here or not that absolutely is up to you depending on what you've got um, I've got here a static mine head piece it's not painted on the bottom apologies about that but you can just plop that down somewhere sensible and you've got here hints that maybe there's a a mine below where dwarfs did I say dwarf let's have a dwarf hang, hanging around here and uh, you can rearrange absolutely everything to make uh, a really uh, nice dungeon area and quickly reincorporate some pieces differently so you've got a bit of a snaking design here some barrels here you've got a possible hit of a mine here so you've got an entrance an open cavern and, an, and a route out and uh, absolutely as you can see i'm not using all the pieces i've got numbers of these sets i'm going to show some larger caverns and, co and combinations but as you can already see that even with one set uh, one cavern set you've uh, you've really got quite a few options uh, available to you and if you wanted to add kind of a, a real flourish of color you could add your own kind of and don't start laughing please giant mushroom funguses etc into the cavern now okay that red one's a little bit comic but uh, maybe this yellow slimy one's more your cup of tea um, and of course what do you find in dead ends so you've got a nice dead end down here but of course sarcophaguses with skeletons in etc so you've got a you've got a, a real range of things that you can do that just quickly livens up your dungeon and uh, quite quickly makes it an interesting place for your players to actually explore and you can place things in such a way that it really obscures things one trick I use when I do these dungeons is I use black cloths, small napkins or tablecloths etc or, or just cut up black t-shirts will do so as the players walk in an area and their torches illuminate an area I'm actually covering up huge sections of the cavern so they're not explored and I reveal it and peel it back slowly and slowly and slowly so that they don't just suddenly see oh yeah there's a way out here so although they might well see undulations and lumps underneath the territory etc as they come into the room and they and they see the dungeon then not the whole game and the whole design isn't isn't revealed but it also gives you time to get the dawn forge pieces all in place populated with your mushrooms and your people and your monsters and your and your various sets uh, your your various scene settings etc and um, before you know it they're adventuring and nosing around all the nooks and crannies because they can't see where they're going they actually see shadow you can actually reveal slight hints of a of a of an opening and then as you go around the corner they see the first barrel do they then just charge in thinking great i found the treasure stash not to realize that actually that's the ogre's corner um little little nice nook and cranny because he's in a dead end he's going to fight he's really going to fight because he's very narked there's an adventure of charging in looking at his um his recently nabbed booty brandy whatever it may be okay um one other thing i can't not comment on is uh this particular age range of dawn forge and there are two types two simple types of ages very easy to identify so let me just pick up a piece that I'm not used in this set here. You've actually got lugs, lug points here, into which you can add these bow ties. Now you only do this on the old range, so this has been going since 2000, and the original uh, several years had these bow ties and these little lug recesses, recesses on every piece, so that you can actually lock them in to place. And they very solidly, as you can see, quite solidly hold the places and pieces in place now with the felt bases i think they've realized that it's just unnecessary um some people like these bow ties so things don't get knocked and slid around but as you can see it adds an extra bit of time uh, to you setting up your dungeons and you have to go you meant to go around and populate all these little tie pieces i've not put that in place properly into place but as you can see uh, uh, you know you, you 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 can zoom in this play this full screen etc you really can't see too well where these bow ties go they've painted the whole thing a decent gray and uh, you don't necessarily need to do this but if you find people or players are moving the tablecloth or the mat that you've got or things are sliding around then the bow tie for the older range is a fantastic idea if you've got a combination like i have of old and new 
these small bow tie uh, can be cut in half and you can permanently either pop them in or glue them in or blue tack them in and if you get a grey blue tack um, or a modelling putty type thing you really can't tell that the uh, that they're even there so it's a really good way of hiding them so that's the the infamous Dawn Forge bow, bow ties each each set you get absolutely ample loads of them so you won't need to run out of them and I'll mention them a few times in these videos and then I'll stop mentioning them so uh, hopefully you've watched a few that mention the bow ties and I don't need to repeat myself too often okay so fantastic set caverns are my absolute favorite and uh, I'm going to go through uh, a few other pieces and a few other sets so I'm going to have a cavern set I'm then going to do a passage set and I'm going to link a cavern and a passage set together and then do some rivers and lakes etc so um, hopefully you'll uh, you'll you'll bear with me